get started <laughs> scott thank you so much for joining us today i'm john volger from premier guitar i've got scott holiday from the rival sons here with us it's been five years since our last rundown we all went in the black hole man yeah we went in the black hole the covid black hole it's just like yesterday we were hanging out right right, right. that's how it feels and but it's been a i mean been a busy time you guys have been recording you've been touring you've been doing it all we did yeah we have dark fighter coming out dark fighter Following up uh, uh, Lightbringer coming out right behind it. So yep. that's cool. Have Sad. fun. Great. And you're playing a very familiar friend. Yeah, this one stays around. I'm, I'm going to show you guys a whole bunch of guitars. I switched a bunch out. I've done a bunch of custom stuff. I'm lucky. People want to like do guitars with me. This yeah. one is something I did early on with Doug Cower. I call this guitar Excalibur because it's the, the one guitar <laughs> to end them all. Sure. Um, and it's got real, real life relishing. <laughs> Real life relic up on it. Um, I've used this guitar forever. Um, love it. Love yeah. it. It's just a standard tuned guitar. Um, let's grab some more guitars. Oh, right, We're short yeah, on okay, time, yeah, so I'll move very quickly. Oh, yeah, here. yeah, you bet. And I, I, I <clears throat> love that you've uh, here, I'll give this to you too. embraced the whole uh, Firebird I was body talking about style. this um, with some friends that uh, when I started doing it, this was the first Firebird I got. It's a 99 Custom Historic. Firebird, and when I got this one, nobody was playing Firebird. Nobody. I right. mean, you see Mike Campbell will pull one out, yeah. you know, but I was always thinking about like Brian Jones and Keith sharing that Firebird 7. Like, right. I, I was thinking about like uh, Roxy Music or like some of the early guys that, you know, of course, Johnny Winter. Yeah. I wasn't really thinking of anybody current. Yeah, yeah. I, when I started to, when I found this guitar, I was just thinking, that's cool. It's a guitar nobody's playing, and it just kind of looked how the first record I made with Dave Cobb uh, before the fire, we made that record. And I thought, this guitar looks how that guitar sounds to me. <laughs> yeah. And I know yeah. that's ridiculous, but um, I, I was lucky that when I started to play them and I got this one, I did a few things. I had had the pickups rewired by Tom Short and did, did caps and stuff and, yeah. and replaced the tuners that are so difficult, the banjo tuners with sure. these ones. And, um, and it just worked. It just felt, it immediately felt right. It was like, I was playing strats and tellies and different guitars. And this guitar was a lot more to wrestle with. Yeah. It's longer, feels longer scale. And it's got a bigger neck. You can feel it. It's got like a chunkier neck yeah, on right. it. And it was just something to wrestle with. And I realized real quick that I actually loved that. Yeah. That it, it made me want to slow down and, and, and it was a lot more like, big wave riding instead of splashing around on the little waves and moving around real quick. You know, you see, you see like even with big amps too, you'll see guys like right when the big amp comes, like a Jimi Hendrix and <clears throat> these first times people are playing loud amps, they're playing big, long, wide notes. Right. They're not moving fast, 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 fast. It's right. really big, long sections because it's that big sound. You're not trying to move too quick when you're playing behind 200 watt amps it's like, yeah you know, yeah like the paul kossoff idea this is like right. big notes you know yeah and 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 i think that's what's so great about about your band you write these really iconic riffs that just i don't know man they just jump off tape like that you know thank you okay let's hear about this okay this one uh i had built by doug cower i love it uh i call this guitar organa major this is his, his nebula finish. I don't know if you can Love see it. that really good. The oh, yeah. sparkle, it's hard to catch. Um, it's like I'm looking at a James Webb photo. Is that <laughs> right? <laughs> um, it's really great. I actually used this guitar for something on the new record, and it lived, it lived in, it's a baritone, it lived in A to A. That's how I do my baritones. Yeah. And I've actually made a custom tuning for this record where it's in C to C. Wow, and way it, down there. It actually <laughs> loves that tuning <laughs> even more. Uh, it's beautiful. It's wonderful. It's one of my favorite guitars too. Definitely my favorite baritone guitar. I'm gonna grab another one now. Here we go. Ooh. Moving quickly. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. A lot of people have seen the uh, 
the, the famous Yamaha guitar they're really leading with right now. Yeah. This, uh, they came to me, I'm, I'm friends with those guys over there, and they came to me, and that guitar, the, the normal body is a little bit small for what I like, and I was just kind of getting on a kick with uh, bigger hollow body guitars, so I sat down with them and kind of co-designed this guitar. God, I love and, it. And got to like kind of hit all the details with them, so it does a lot of my familiar favorite like Gretsch details that I use on all these guitars. Um, spark, yeah. Sparkle binding and, and the TV Jones pickups and book gold back painted guard and all that stuff. It's really wonderful. They didn't put this guitar in production, so I think they built me one, they built Davy Joe one, and they built uh, Butch Walker one maybe, oh. and that's all that's out there. So this was the very first one. And I co-designed it. So. John, so is there talk of like a signature run of it? Or I mean, we talked about it. Yeah. I'm not really trying to do a signature guitar. I feel like it's weird when there's a name on a guitar. <laughs> and, well, it uh, worked for less Paul. I don't know if this would be my signature guitar, but it was fun to design this thing with them. I keep I keep it in open G. Um, it's a nice guitar. Beautiful. beautiful well, it looks guitar. very you, man. I, Thank I, you. I love it. Look at I'm just gonna say this. You've been seeing this. Oh yeah. Hey, guess what? I'm telling you, nobody had one of these before I built this thing with my good friend Matt Hughes at Banker Custom. Again, like the Firebirds, I just kind of went, I want to build a, Cor a Carina Flying V. Yeah. And I got turned on to uh, Matt through our mutual friend, Tyler Bryant. That's right, yeah. I can't. <laughs> Thanks, Tyler. <Yeah. laughs> and um, we hit it off at a show. Um, we were playing with Stone Temple Pilots, and uh, Tyler was on the gig too, and we all hooked up backstage. Matt came to the show for yeah. Banker, and we talked, decided to build this, and I told him immediately, I have this idea, I've been wanting to do this Lonnie Mac thing. Yeah. No one does the Lonnie Mac, the crossbar, the flying A. Yeah. So he was like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Uh, so and my great. friends at Vibratone make this thing actually. Oh. They, they actually, so you, we don't have to manufacture like ourselves, you yeah, know? Yeah. So they have this thing, and uh, Matt just did a killer job on it. I mean, he has the blueprints from Gibson to do these uh, 58, the original 58 blueprints. Wow. Like a co op thing he did with Gibson. So this is super accurate. Uh, besides coming up with these funky knobs, which I actually really love. I anyway. love the funky knobs. Yeah, this thing is a killer, uh, super big neck. Very resonant, beautiful guitar. I did the TV Jones again in here in yeah. the humbucker setting. Um, I can't say much more. I just love this guitar. It's one of my new favorites. <laughs> What's and not to love? Used it all over the new record. Yeah. So. this thing. All right, we're going right to the big boy, right yeah. out of the gate. <clears throat> this is another guitar that Matt made me from Banker, and uh, I saw a Gretsch double neck like this. Steven Stern had made uh, one of them, and it was just so killer, and I kept it in my pictures forever and thought, man, if ever there's a need for one. Um, the one I saw actually had more pickups, obviously. This is a different kind of thing. But um, I did some songs on the new record that we did a lot of baritone stuff. Yeah. But then I would solo in standard. Right. And it's just too weird to do it all on a baritone. And I didn't want to use a pedal to achieve it. So I had uh, I asked on hand and knee for Matt to build me this thing. And he did it. It's the first time he's ever made this. It's the second one I've ever seen. It's the second one in existence, as far as I know. And we decided to do single pickups. Uh, Gretsch guys helped out, Steven Stern helped out in getting me like some, some key parts like this Cadillac tailpiece and stuff and, and, and knobs and goodies like that. But it's a killer. So this God. is a baritone. How this heavy is standard. Is it? Yeah, feel it. It's pretty heavy. Yeah. It's pretty heavy, oh, but I got boy. this nice strap that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's a lot of guitar, man. That's it's that, killer. It's every once in a while you build a guitar that's like every time I'm gonna play those certain songs, I'm gonna play it on that guitar. Yeah. Till I die. Yeah. And that's 
it's this guitar, so <laughs> thanks, Matt. Yeah, okay. love it. <laughs> In perfect order, I have another guitar that falls in that same category. <laughs> Why does this guy need so many double necks? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, it's probably a little bit of gluttony, but yeah, it's but, really necessity. Yeah, it's really necessity. You cover like so much sonic space, man. In That's a it. Show. It's really necessity, John. Yeah. I promise. After we did <clears throat> Feral Roots, I had done a few things with uh, twelve strings and alternate tunings, and also six string in the same song. So I had to really twist Doug Cower's arm to build this. And he slightly hates me forever because it was such a project. Um, the original 12 neck was like, the uh, headstock was like this tall. Oh, really? It was this man, and I was like, that looks weird. And he's like, I know it looks weird. How can we achieve it? We have to do the, uh, the Rickenbacker slotted thing, how they do their 12s like in and out right. like that. So he came up with that and this Total thing, hassle for your tech. <laughs> total hassle. Yeah. Extreme, I love it. Yeah, <laughs> Thanks, Nate's mate. cool with it. <laughs> um, I really, I really love this guitar. I named this guitar Serious Black. Oh, that's and great. It's just a beast, man. It's beautiful. There's nothing like it. It's really a lot of guitar in every way. God. Um, I use this on like Feral Roots mainly. That's really what I use it on. Yeah. I'm going to use it on some stuff on the new... Uh, a new song too on the new record, but the uh, Feral Roots is why I built this guitar and it's the song, it's the guitar I'll use for that song for the rest of my life. Fabulous. with Doug Cower. Oh, love that. Uh, as we did so much stuff with the baritone on the new album, this yeah. is a baritone uh, Super Chief that Doug built me. And it's wonderful and great, and I don't have too much more to say. Mm -hmm. Just look at it and enjoy it. I think he calls this finish, what does he call it? E Easter Island finish? I don't know. He's got I don't all know. of his strange names. Beautiful. Um, Doug, maybe in the comments you can... It's very ship. <laughs> it's very shipwrecky. Yeah, it is very. It, yes, it is totally shipwrecky. And that blue over gold. Uh, this is a baritone A to A. I use it on songs like uh, Rapture yeah. from the new record. Okay. okay, love it. This is a, a penguin that a uh, three pickup three penguin. Pick, pickup penguin. Uh, much like the the banker double neck, I uh, had seen a Gretsch, uh, and it was a three pickup Gretsch um, in this color years ago. Huh. I saw it probably 10 years ago, and I carried the picture around for a long time. And then uh, Fred Gretsch wrote me, because I used Bigsby's on like all my guitars. Yeah. So he called me up and wrote me this like very, he's very old school, Fred Gretsch. He wrote me like, like a handwritten letter. Thank you for using Bigsby. How I appreciate cool. you. And I felt, oh man, I felt transported like yeah. 50 years in the past. And I'm kind of an old school guy like that. I really <laughs> was warm and awesome. And his assistant called me and said, hey, do you want anything? Do you need anything? Just like, you know, you would dream. Like one yeah, day right. I, people are gonna want to know what I want. <laughs> They're gonna give it to me. <laughs> uh, and I, I, my um, knee jerk reaction from the hip. No, 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 I don't need anything. Yeah, yeah. I have too much stuff anyway. I'm yeah. happy. Thanks for making yeah. such a great thing. I'm stoked you guys see it. And then I changed my mind and I called him back immediately and said, <laughs> I changed my mind. There is something I really, yeah. really, really want. Yeah. I was trying to be cool. And I had, well, I hadn't at that point done anything with Steven Stern, and he's uh, just one of my all-time favorite guitar builders, custom shop guys. So I, I showed him pictures of this. He totally remembered it since we've become really good friends, and he built this for me. He was asking if I wanted to put my name on it or do, like, a custom graphic or do anything different. I really didn't want to. I put the pickups I want in here, which are TV Jones, uh, Powertron Plus, and Powertrons. And, you know, that's what I put in here. Yeah. Other than that, I didn't do anything different because you know what? It's perfect. Yeah. It's just beautiful. It's just a perfect guitar. Um, this one I keep in D standard and have played it on Too Bad forever. I recorded it Too Bad with it and uh, cut the solo for Too Bad uh, on Feral Roots right off the floor with it. And it's just, this has been one of my best friends since. Love Grab it.
thing in the Steven Stern world. Right. They came back to me and said, do you want to do something else? I certainly do, of course. Now that I have this thing, I know how great they are. So let's make something. Uh, and they had done this weird guitar that was a sparkle finish over uh, like a Mexican blanket, like a rainbow blanket. I love similar. that. So I said, and it was a penguin. So I, I was like, I don't want to do another penguin. I would love to do a big, crazy falcon because there's something great, like, like the Ted Nugent thing where he's like yeah. playing a guitar that's far too hollow and big with that much distortion, but I, it's somehow working. Oh yeah. So I said, I want to try that. Um, and I, I kind of fell in love with Falcons and came up with this one. It's very, very close and personal to me. I call it Mayura. <clears throat> that's the Sanskrit word for uh, uh, peacock. Because ah. all their all the guitars are made after, named after birds, yeah. you know? So I came up with this one. Uh, this under, undercoat here is actually uh was was based on a scarf that i wear and take with me like a it's like my linus blanket i <laughs> take it on the plane i'll wear it in photo shoots i'll use it in my bunk whatever just like i have a little blanket you know <laughs> yeah little like scarf thing um, sure. i actually laid it out flat and we had it professionally shot and i sent those images to them and they laid that image on the it's the first layer so this is actually the thing that i use all over the world all the time and then they shot this uh, uh sparkle over the top and it's kind of a fun guitar that's i like i made up a story for it i don't know if we have time for the whole story but i i, I mean the idea was that it's a 59 yeah that got acquired and then that some hippie acquired it and painted this uh, Sanskrit stuff all over it, you know, Perfect. like like they would do, like you they know? Would do. Yeah, like a hippie with a white falcon. And then it got acquired and somebody decided in the 70s to shoot this bowling ball sparkle finish over the top. Yeah. And it's, you know, just, I love just that weathered it's, and well played. It's got a backstory. <laughs> I love that. That's some great. of the details, the bird. Um, the peacock feather up here and then up here instead of having the normal badge i put a what's called a sudarshan chakra up there so um i love this one love that it steven stern's fun and it's it's i i went all the way and made it all hollow like the thing you shouldn't do when you're using a lot of fuzz i yeah. did that and i figured out how to tame it a little bit it's a really beautiful sounding guitar yeah and if it gets away from you a bit so much the so much the better it's like, fun. like, like, it's like loose. A, yeah. Gates are your friend with a big hot. Like, I have a 330 at home that I really love too. Yeah. And I don't bring it out because it's a little wily. But, um, yeah, you, you need to gate stuff if you're using fuzzes and hollow guitars. Yeah. This is besides the blue Firebird, the Gibson yeah. Firebird. This was, I think, the, the, for this band, the second guitar I acquired. I found it at a Gypsy Jazz guitar store. Um, it's a 62. Jazzmaster slab board. How great. Um, I actually replaced the pickups with the, um, the Lawler Jazzmaster P90s. I have the originals put aside and everything yeah. in order, but the originals were just really surfy and yeah. really thin and just yeah. didn't play well with everybody else. Sure. These are incredible. These sound unbelievable and they really let the guitar breathe still. Um, it had these knobs. It had these black face muddy water style knobs on that. there. It was already kind of beat up and aged like this. When I saw it, I did not have any money. I literally put a credit card on it without, I, I mean, I just went, yeah. I can't pass it up. I think it was like $1,600. Oh. It was such a good deal God. that I just kind of went, yeah, I'll take it. And gave him the credit card number and uh, he hit me back and said, there was like 29 people behind you you were the first one do you want the guitar yes i'll take it so i've had this guitar since the beginning of the band and, so uh, cool even <coughs> even my good friend doug cower who, who builds a lot of these nice guitars for me um he says he thinks this is the best sounding one i own Come. It's okay. nice one. well that's a ringing endorsement yeah yeah <laughs> there you go Wise, what's shaking back there? 
Okay. Uh, well, they're not all live. I don't want everything live. Sure. Um, I have a 412 live and a 1212 that are live. Okay. And then the others are backups. But um, So what is a Supra? What, uh, what Supra amp are you? This is, this is where things get interesting. Bob. Okay. So I've used tube amps yeah. and I've used an orange CS50 for a long time. Yeah. And I've used uh, a Supra Statesman for a long time now. Yeah. They're great amps. Yeah. I still use them. Yeah. In this rig particularly, I decided to do something different, and that is, I went to the dark side. Oh well, let's see, let's hear, let's dive in. <laughs> I don't know if it's exactly the dark <laughs> side, but by that I mean um, I ended up building a, a modeling rig. Oh wow! Um, okay. Dirt, dirt, but even before the pandemic, when we would tour, I had these big head cases and a Bradshaw rig. It's the rig between the one that we talked about. Sure. And it was thousands of pounds yeah yeah and things have gotten more and more expensive to tour oh god yeah. weight is an issue and really originally i built this fly rig because uh, we would be like the gear would be moving and i'd have to go play a one-off and then fly back to the tour yeah. so i had to have something i could just take quickly with me and i used kind of a lot of stuff so i had to get tricky with it so i started using a uh, line six helix oh, okay oh and, great okay um i i got i used the, there's four sins in there so i figured out how to use like the four pedals that are essential that this thing probably isn't going to do perfectly, but it does everything else pretty perfectly. And that's what I flied around with. Okay. Then we did tours where we went, actually, let's just take the fly rig on the whole tour. So I did that. Then I started to build a new rig and went, I think I'm going to just stay in this world because I really actually became close to how this sounded and I figured it out. I had the A rig and the fly rig on stage just like this at one yeah. point with the AB switch and I could go between them and hear like, okay, uh, I had my front of house out there telling me from, from the talk back, yeah. more mids, less low wind, go to the orange side. So I split this in half and one side is my orange side, one oh. side is my Supro side. I run them into respective cabinets. I run into, um, believe it or not, I run into a solid state power amp. Yeah. It's super efficient. It's super clean. It sounds great. Bulletproof. Yeah, that's great. I'm just man. saying, I know there's going to be a lot of haters. Technology is there. Yeah. If you're nerdy enough to know how to move the knobs around and you can make it work for you, the modeling tech now, and so many people are doing it with XFX. Oh, yeah. And uh, what's the other really big one? Yeah. The Kemper, of course. Yeah, the Kemper. Um, I, I'm using these guys because I've been friends with them for a long time. Sure. And well, and, and working in working with you for the house and having him a b it and so yeah we went back and forth until he couldn't tell yeah and then i would say which one do you like more <laughs> and it was this one huh. this one that actually be, it became the better sounding one do you feel okay the thing that gets me with with that is it doesn't quite feel it but i think it's probably because I'm usually on ears with direct things, but if we have cabinets behind it, probably feels makes a big difference. The yeah, same. It makes a big difference. Uh, knowing how to warm it up and use the right stuff with it, but the live speaker makes all the difference. Yeah, because yeah. your your guitar will react kind of yeah. the same way. Yeah, and I got out of ears. I was touring with in ears for a while, and it just for me. I don't know if it's because of the, the this rig or whatever. Just in general. Yeah. Ears for me freak me out. Yeah. A lot of guitar players are like that. A lot of my friends that do it. There's a few of us that just stay with monitoring. I feel weird in here. Yeah. When I can't hear people and oh, the bubble and, right. and and the air on stage. And to and me, it's when things go wrong thin. and it's buried in your ear, Ooh, it's a nightmare. Yeah. When things go wrong out here, it's manageable because I can just walk over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Now, this is the mothership. There's a lot going on here, but yeah. kind of bring us through Okay. Yeah. It's easy. Basics. I'm going to do my best. This is the Helix. Okay. That's the brain. Yeah. And the cool thing about it is, I think I'm the first person to do it, according to uh, Bob Bradshaw. And, well, and he would know. <laughs> he, I mean, yeah. he would know. I mean, I know he's never done it. Yeah. Um, because I was working on it with him yeah. for the first time. But uh, Line 6 even, I don't think they've really done, had too much experience with it. So I was the guinea pig, and I was basically coming up with how to do this. This controls... Bob's switching equipment. Well, wow. so I mean, I have his switcher here. This, yeah, this RST. And that's the, that's the one you had from the rig prior to this. 
Yes. You just kind of cannibalized that rig. I rebuilt it and, and kept it the board. Okay. So that this is the RST. And normally this has like a row of presets and then pedals you can access and banks like that. Yeah. I personally liked how this thing, I became accustomed to how the Helix looks. Sure, it's, it's clean. It's got all the strips. And if you look, like if I move through like like songs, you can see like- oh, yeah, Your set list. Yeah, yeah, my set list. <laughs> and then uh, besides the set list that I can see all the songs, I can now see all my settings. Oh, yeah. Like I don't have to remember, like this is where the presets were before, down here, right. and there's no strip. So sometimes the intro would be here and it would just go right into a, a solo. And then sometimes it'll go into the, like the verse and then a chorus, but sometimes there's a pre-chorus there. Sometimes <laughs> there's no solo here and it's over here. And I'm just having to remember all this. Yeah. I have something like 70 songs in these things. Yeah. I don't, I don't know, man. And, and you're playing. <laughs> I don't and you're gonna play the whole time I don't remember too. all this done. <laughs> yeah. So now when I have uh, the Helix, I can kind of look and see where everything is very quickly and cool. then it's all right there. Um, it looks beautiful. It's really handy. This this pedal is handy. Um, if I walk you through the the line yeah, of it all, yeah. Okay, so, so so you start with a quarter inch cable. Uh, I do. Yeah. So no, I use an eighth inch cable. Yeah. That's the secret to my sound. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. like one of these little tiny guys right here. But you you've never never been a wireless guy. Always kind of a cable dude. It, this band's oh yeah. yeah. Yes. I like yeah because it, it I like that yeah. yeah. I'm not going as far as the coily cable, <laughs> but I'm cable. I'm so cable. Cable straight into into my Dunlop wall here. Great. Uh, I always keep this pedal out front because I think it's the greatest thing ever. It's a Zvex Fuzz Probe. Oh, okay. It's just weird. Yeah. And you know what it is? It's like a theremin on a fuzz. Yeah. So I can use it for a fuzz. I can use it for some like runaway effects. I've used it on a few records. <laughs> I keep my onboard tuner, although Nate does a great job. I just like to have one, so sure. Jay's talking to people and I want to check things up, you yeah. know? Um, I threw this thing on there for fun because I had space. That's the darn honest truth. Okay. I had a spot and I wanted one little toy that I can just like, that's not in the machine so much. It's just out front. It's uh, the attack vector by way is huge. A, is that a phaser? It's or? a phaser and an envelope follower or oh. both together at the same time. Okay. Do you ever, do you ever use it? <laughs> yeah, I, I use it all the time. It's okay. super wild. Like we do a bunch of weird freestyle sections. And, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm gonna get around to the horn so you can see I can use actually everything. Oh, wow. But I like having this one out front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I prefer because I use some bigger guitars and a Firebird, it's not like a Strat where you can, you can pinky roll the volume. Yeah. I always have a dedicated volume out on my board. Yeah, so love that. This is a dedicated volume. Uh, this one actually controls, I have a, a Mobius in my rack and this actually controls the Mobius. So if I want to like slow down something or you know, like phase out a, a tremolo or a rotary speaker or something. Yeah. Uh, this thing plays a lot of roles on the Helix. It'll do a number of things in here as, a, as an expression pedal. Okay. Uh, this is a dedicated Univibe. I use a Mojo Vibe. It's a de dedicated Univibe pedal for the speed and then this is dedicated to i showed it to you before i was using it earlier it's the line six dl4 the first series dl4 wow. now you're thinking you have all this stuff and a helix do you really need the dl4 that has four or three settings and a tap yeah you can only use one because it's back in the rack i'm telling you when it came out like 20 years ago or something, right. I made a patch on it that I can't replicate. Yeah, I, I've got two of them and they're amazing. They're, I can't replicate it. Yeah. It does a certain thing where it has a delay in the heel. It, it does a runaway at the toe, but what's really special is in the middle. You can put it in the middle and it's kind of doing a runaway almost. Yeah. And still it's seated in both worlds and that's different than any other expression. It just has its own sound. So I love it so much. I have its own pedal and that's why I have it in here. This board is the RST that's dedicated to the switching system. I decided to keep it out front. If I wanna remove this, I can, if we're like in a little tiny room. Sure. Um, but we're usually in a room like this, so this is fine. Yeah. And what this does is I can access in real time all the pedals in the back. So you can see they're all named here. Sure. So if we're jamming and having fun, there's my DL4, I can just turn it on and off. Um, and in here, 
This is where it's really interesting, and I hope it's not too nerdy for everybody. Oh, there is no way I pipe for us. in the pedals. Is I have two boards. I have a high gain board off stage, and I have a modulation board off stage. Now this has four sins, so the way I'm piping the effects in is through the sins. So I have a high gain send A, and then I have a high, or and then I have a regular gain uh, modulation send B. The way that's cool is in here on my t on my line, I can move. Board A, and I can move more board B, which means if I want to put like the high gain board at the end on a patch and have all the modulation in front of it, I could do that. But wow. in general, they're not trapped together. So generally, you have the high gain board early. I'll have other stuff between there, and then I'll have my, my modulation board here because it's delays and stuff. So sure. it wants to go towards the end. So it's great. And I keep those, those sins on in my Helix at all times. So as long as they're on in here, I can turn these things on and off and they're live. That's great. Okay, so I'm curious, you, you guys just finished two albums. Did you, in recording, did you utilize this rig no. or use your... No, I, I used uh, the old rig, yeah. the, the Bradshaw rig sure. that I never got to share with you guys because yeah. I really wanted to and I never got to. Well, this but is this an abbreviated is, version of that. Yeah. It's not abbreviated at all. It's actually better. Oh, right. Really? Okay. It's more powerful. It does more. Yeah. It's way more in the future and it's way more limitless. Oh, God, that's great. Yeah. So, um, okay. So the next uh, record, do you think you're recorded with this rig? I, I mean, yeah, I'll leave, I'll leave this set up for sure. Just cause I can access it. And that's what I did with the Bradshaw rig. It's set up. It's all in there. We can use it. Yeah. I can pop things on and off. And then I, I don't, like with the Bradshaw thing, I just went through different amps. Yeah, yeah. I don't always use my like orange amps, those big sure. amps. I'm a huge fan of small amp. Yeah. So I'll go through like uh, a little Supra. I'll go through like they made a, uh, a Supreme 1600 amp. That's like a little like eight inch speaker. Right. I like the sound of those. Yeah, yeah. And they they break up in a different way, and they 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 just hit a different way. Uh, Dave Cobb also has this old Gretsch, little tiny Gretsch that we use. So I'll use all this crazy stuff these tiny tiny amps yeah <laughs> so it works yeah. like that and I'll, i can do that similarly here you know i can run into little things i can like bypass amp section just use uh, uh effects sections and i'll you know in general when i'm recording i don't run through all of it i'll just pick things this is a machine to make it all happen sure we're on our eighth and ninth records yeah to make all nine records like happen successfully yeah and i mean and i've looked at your you know your your pedals over there and there's a lot going on but it's kind of like you don't have to use every color in your palette. You just got them in case. Right? I, honestly, I started with a wah pedal, first record. <laughs> wah pedal, one fuzz, maybe that line six delay. That's it. And Then you make a record, and you go, oh, yeah, I use the Univibe, and I use this other thing, too. So now that's on my board. I made another record. I wanted to make it sound a little different, so yeah. now I use that fuzz, and I use this thing, you know what I mean? I made another record. I used three new boxes for that. Ah, bring those on there too. Yeah, yeah. You make nine records, it starts to look like that and this and everything sounds accurate. I really wish, I, my next life as a guitar player, <laughs> it's telly into a tweed or something, you know? <laughs> I'm going to yeah. telly into a super. Yeah. yeah. This life, it's uh, Willy Wonka's, you know, it's Willy oh, yeah. Wonka's chocolate factory of rigs, you know? Uh, right, right. So um, all this stuff in there, it's it's used where it needs to be used. Yeah. This pedal is used on this song. This pedal is used on that song. Right. These two pedals are used on that song. It's, it's like that. Yeah, great. Not Nothing is all on at once, but maybe we'll do that and just turn everything on at <laughs> once. <laughs> Stop on all, yeah, yeah. Blow up the building. Yeah, big finish. Yeah, yeah. yeah tear down the building. So place. that's essentially the rig, dude. I think God. I've given you guys all I can give you. Yeah. Well, Scott, hey, man, congrats. <laughs> I can't wait to hear the, the two new records. I think that's great. Cool. Love the band. Love your work, man. Great to see you again, John. Yeah, great seeing you. Cheers, y'all. Till next time. Thanks, guys.